but <laughs> otherwise it wouldn't be heard. Anyway, um, it's after five, so I'd like to get moving with the last uh, session. And it's my great honor. I'm Harriet, Harriet Evans. Um, I am um, a modern historian of China. I work in the University of Westminster. And my main research and um, interests are on women and gender. But more recently, I've been working um, uh, compiling an oral history of a very depressed um, area of old Beijing, which is uh, the area um, of, that Orni uh, looks at in his wonderful documentary film, Asia Street. So it is my great pleasure, first of all, and an honor, to introduce Oning. Oning is a, a film documentary uh, maker. You will have, um, many of you will have heard of him already. His first important and uh, full-length documentary film was on Sanyanli, which is an area of um, Canton, a very famous um, in China's colonial history, in fact, since the middle of the 19th century. And then his next film, big film, um, in 2006, was, is the one that you're going to see 10 minutes of today, Meisha Street, um, and it's a film that will speak for itself, and I very much look forward to having a discussion with you about the issues that arise from it. Um, Oning is also, um, has been very involved in a whole series of artistic and architectural projects as well. So he is a, um, a man, a filmmaker of many talents that you don't see within the filmic frame itself. And uh, this is uh, Xie Jingji, who is a film um, curator who works for China Culture um, Connect and which was responsible for the first... Um, we organised the first London Chinese Visual Festival last year and uh, we will be doing the second edition this year and I uh, hope uh, we'll be seeing you all here in, in London in July. <laughs> okay. So, um, we Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Oning is, is going to um, kick off with a brief introduction to the film. And then we'll look at the uh, clip, and then we'll um, move straight into a Q&A session. Yes, um, Mesa Street actually is uh, one result of the Da Shi Lan project I did in 2005 and 2006. I got a commission from the German Federal Culture Foundation. Um, <coughs> uh, this foundation is going to running a project about um, the big city in Asia. It's left Beijing as a, a case study. So this project is called Beijing Case. Um, before the Olympic Games, they invite uh, some filmmakers, writers, poets, and artists to make research about Beijing. And <coughs> I, sp um, I spent one month to make research. Uh, at the very beginning, because the, the German Foundation, they showed Simon Lee in Venice Biennale. They like it very much. Then they, they want me to make a similar, a, a same research about the open village in Beijing. But actually, in Beijing, there's no open village because, you know, in Guangzhou, Guangzhou the economy started earlier. So Guangzhou has an urban village. But in Beijing, the suburban and the central is very clear. There's no urban village. Then I spent one month to make research and Finally, I select the Da Shilar area as my uh, uh, research because it's located in very central of Beijing. It's just in the southern of Tiananmen Square. And also because it's a, uh, it's a slum. It's a slum with uh, many, many people, uh, migrant people uh, come to Beijing from different uh, <coughs> places. And the community, uh, the community, the, this area is uh, very high density, and that is a same um, area just like Simon Lee in Guangzhou. Then, then I decided to make a research about uh, Da Shi Lan. Since um, the 2008 Olympic Games, and the Beijing government want to get the Tianmen Avenue as a working street, so they need to get Mason Street wider to, to solve the traffic problem in front of Tiananmen Square. So the demolition, the demolition project happened in Beijing. My film actually is document three families on, on Mason Street, but mainly Mr. Zhang Jinli. 
he is a uh, owner of the restaurant with this very good business. And the government is going to demolish his restaurant and he was not so satisfied with the com 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 conversation. Then he, he, he started to protest. Then, um, after I met him for one month, I decided to, to give a camera, a digital camera to him. I just taught him the basic technique, technique how to use the camera, and then he started to make video. And so the, the, the documentary actually was edited by um, mainly uh, Mr. Zhang's footage. At the same time, some footage by my, by our team. It's about 85 minutes, and here I'm going to screen the ending. It's about 10 minutes. Actually, I feel very difficult to find a way to go deep into this area. Before that, I read a book by a, a Chicago University uh, professor, Street Corners. Uh, the book was published in 1940. It's about a slum in the northern Boston. A slum, a slum for many, many Italian immigrant people who live there. He, he, he just like me, he, he cannot find a way to go in, inside the, the, the community. Then one day he met a, a, a young guy on the street and he met friends with him. And, and this young guy took him into the uh, community. And the young guy also finally became a very important academic assistant to him. So this is a very typical successful um, uh, research. So I was very lucky. Um, one day when I sh when I shooting the, the the street landscape in very early morning, an, an old man came to tell me something will happen in, in, in at eight at nine o'clock. So that was the first time I met Zhang Jingli. It was also the first time for him to protest. That day. He was very nervous because he first he put the the banners for the first time on the top of, of his restaurant. And when he saw me with a camera, he think that maybe I'm the CCTV journalist <laughs> who can help him. <laughs> and he, he came over and talked with me and and, and, and I pretend <coughs> to be him. And and then we, we, we just we just start knowing each other at the time. And after one month, I found he was a very interesting guy uh, with humor and with strong energy. Then I decided to uh, give the camera uh, to him. It, it was very surprised. One week, after one week, he, he gave me back a lot of footage. And I found uh, he started to interview the neighborhood, neighbor, neighbor. Um, uh, just like a, a really TV journalist. So this is a very interesting uh, sample that how ordinary people become a citizen journalist. Because the digital camera actually was very helpful for him, for his protest. Uh, you know, but you, you could not see the film. Uh, um, when, when the police came to uh, his restaurant want, want to take down the banners and then Mr. Zhang put the camera on them and then the police dared not to do it. So immediately Zhang Jingli realized the digital camera is a very important weapon for, for his projects and then he, he spent a, a lot of time to, to, to make the documentary. Um, 
at the very beginning, he just focused on his protest. And, and then I told him, you need to also uh, document your family, because it's your family to support your protest. Mm -hmm. And this also made the, the narrative of the documentary film more interesting. Otherwise, the whole film is just about the protest. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we cannot find what, what his um, power from. Actually, I believe his family gave him a lot of support. That is very important. Um, and this film is not about the historical uh, persuasion. It's not about, um, it's not about how to protect a, a historical area in Bay. It's, not, it's about the, the political situation in China today. How the citizen can participate in the public issue, how the uh, ordinary people particip participate in politics. You know, during the Cultural Revolution, ordinary people participate in politics not because they want, they were modified by the state. They become a tool of the party politics. But today, people participate in the politics because they want to get, that, get back their right. So this is the, the difference between the party politics and the citizen politics. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm very lucky to, to meet Mr. Zhang. And when the, <coughs> when the film finished, we have a premiere at MoMA in, at the end of 2009. Uh, and some of my friends come to tell me this is quite sensitive film. Um, you should not screen uh, in China. So I keep it for one year. But in 2007, when the Chongqing uh, demolition event happened, the Chongqing Zui Niu Bing Zhu happened, do you remember the, the very yeah. strong island pictures? Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, house. yeah, the Niao House in Chongqing. Mm -hmm. Then every Chinese newspaper and magazine and radio and TV talking about the demolition issue. Before, the media could not talk about this. Then I decided to screen my film in China, in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, everywhere. Um, every time when I screen the film, I will invite Mr. Zhang to come to have a conversation uh, with the audience. Uh, it's very interesting, after this project, he, he bore a digital camera by himself, Hmm. He opened a blog. He had a very strong idea of archiving everything. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, he began just just like I, 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 told, I told you, like the academic assistant to the Chicago University professor. He become he, he become <coughs> can use a lot of new technology uh, uh, to to help himself. So this is a very interesting case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jing Jing, do you want to make a comment either about the film or about Oling's comments before we open up for discussion? Um, well, actually, uh, I saw the footage before from another film, which is a quite sensitive um, subject. I think you know the film that Zhang Yaxuan probably from the Qian Men Qian. Also, yeah, it's not the first time I saw the story, but uh, what I know is different with the, the filmmaking. Uh, because that film, I believe the cameraman was not your crew. And uh, for this one, for me, as a um, film programmer, I always to take more ten pay more attention to how the film was made. Uh, and I, I noticed, I, I was quite curious, how were you even allowed to take your cameras when the policeman, and of course, a lot of curious moments when, why were the policemen filming that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 that was... The, the most interesting part of the film, just you can saw when the demolition action happened, there's so many cameras, <laughs> right? So this is a historical moment. Different party, different organization um, can take what they want. There's uh, the camera from our team, the camera from the police, the camera from the street office, the camera from uh, uh, NGO, so many cameras want to document. And, and this documentation will develop a different narrative according to their need. For example, the police want to 
uh, maybe want to <coughs> uh, because the, they demolished the house and then they continue to deal with Zhang Dini about the conversation. The, the video actually is a uh, witness, yes. Um, <coughs> so the idea be, behind the documentary, you know, I, I, I set up a, a office called Alternative Archive. I, I produced this film in the name of Alternative Archive. Alternative Archive <coughs> means in China, when you want to learn something about history, you often just got one version, official version of history. So the party, you have the, the narrative. You, sometimes they will have some fiction of, about the history. For example, Lin Biao never met Mao Zedong in Jing Gansan, but in the history of the party, they, they, they tell, this is really happened. Um, so we we want to develop a alternative a alternative history a alternative version of the history. Uh, so we 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 need we would like to ask the ordinary people to document themselves and then develop a, another version of the history. So since there's a lot of camera in the in the demolition, uh, demolition process, it means actually the the history should be a multiple, should be have, should have a multiple version. Mm -hmm. That is very important mm -hmm. uh, in China. Uh, I mean, for the, for the political situation. The reason I asked about it is mainly because um, we are planning to show. I, I know the demolition issue actually um, maybe you you found it started in, in Beijing in two thousand five. Yeah. And then it spread to Chongqing in 2007. Yes. But then one of the biggest issues you must know happened to hometown in Guangzhou. Mm -hmm. in when there was a big university town that was uh, a whole island of people were uh, forced to live in their hometown. And there lots of films being made. But one of the difference I noticed in your film and in the film that we have, uh, we have in, in, in our hands is the, 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 the villagers those who were forced out, they were not allowed to make any video, which was why it's very, uh, they only very kept maybe a few seconds of the moment when their home went down. However, here you can really do the close up, you can do whatever, you can take a really detailed record. I think that really has changed, that government became quite sensitive about uh, the demolishing program and they would not allow anyone. Okay, the case uh, actually for Zhang Jingli, <coughs> Okay, because you know Da Shra is a tourism place. No. <laughs> uh, uh, from long time ago, there's so many tourists with the, with the camera, so the police or the uh, street office cannot recognize who is the tourist, <laughs> who is our documentary <laughs> team. Oh, this is one reason. The second reason is before the demol demolition. Zhang Jingli deal with the police and the uh, street uh, office. If you, if I agree to be demolished, I have to document the whole process. Otherwise, I I will boom myself. Mm -hmm. Then, then the police and the street office agree. Then, Chao Fei is one one member of our team pretend to be Zhang Jingli's sister. <laughs> with her camera, then he, he she, she can document uh, everything inside. That is why. <laughs> I think I mean one, one of the, the the remarkable things about this film I think is to, to concerns the courage of the filmmakers in making the kinds of uh, local connections that you did to facilitate um, what we see here. I mean one of my. Um, um, research uh, subjects in Dashalat is also a restaurateur, Jiayun. And um, he is a restaurateur who, over the last few years, he's a photographer as well on the side. And over the last few years, he has not only taken still photographs, but he has taken clandestine video footage, hours, hundreds of hours of footage of the whole process of demolition of, of Meishu Jie and of the Tianmen, Tianmen Da Jie as well which he can't show. He's edited it into a film, but he can't show because it is 
so sensitive, he was not allowed to film. Mm -hmm. I mean, but this, I think, is not a question of being allowed to film or not being allowed to film. It's kind of grasping hold of the moment and using it very strategically um, in order to produce this film. So I think it's a remarkably courageous um, feat, apart from anything else. But um, maybe we can um, broaden the discussion out. I'm sure you have lots of questions. Yeah. Um, for Westerners, it's hard to read the faces of some of the people in the film. And um, I mean, my mother took pictures of Chinese in the streets of Shanghai in 1922 when the warlords were there, and they had exactly the same expressions. Tremendous patience, and the anger is almost invisible. These people along the side of the street, the neighbors, are they the neighbors in this region? And the, and the soldiers, how much tension is there in this scene? Is there a tremendous underlying passionate resentment, or is it acceptance? I mean, what, what is going on behind these faces? How would you characterize the face, it? face, yes. Um, it's my idea to focus on this face, because they all of them watching the whole demolition process. You know, in China, most of the ordinary people, actually, they, some of them have to face the demolition. But um, uh, the, the, the demolition company will deal with them early. They said, if you move early, I can pay you. Mm -hmm. Good. But actually, if the people meet, move early, they just got a little bit money. Mm -hmm. The people who stay at the last minute can, can get more money. You know, Chinese, I think. Um, so the problem is, the Chinese people always want to, uh, the Chinese people always uh, like to watch. They don't participate. So if when some people like Mr. Zhang, finally, he got a better conversation, and the, and the neighborhood will don't like him because he got more paid money. That um, that means I can can I speak Chinese and you have how to translate. We don't care. Yeah. 就是后面那个镜头啊，我就是特别想把中国人那种围观的这种心态，就是讲出来。就你看，很多人都在围观。他们都就是说，事不关己的时候呢，他们就根本不会参与。就是很多在在拆拆迁的过程中很明显，就是因为拆迁公司一开头就是跟你说，呃，你早点搬，我会给你好的钱。但是早点搬的人呢，发现其实坚持到最后的人拿的钱最多。然后这些人呢，早点早点早搬出去的人就后悔了，所以他看到别人的抗争拿到钱之后，他就后悔。在这之前，他一直就是围观，所以，所以虽然我是一个对这个这个草根政治很感兴趣的人，但是我对普通老百姓的那种那种他的那种缺点，我我我不总是赞美普通人的，就是我觉得普通人也有缺点，就是后面那个镜头，那个围观的镜头，那不同的脸，就是想讲这个。I think actually Owen has expressed himself quite clearly in his English, but mainly as a filmmaker, he wants to he wants to show attention of the psychic of what he sees as ordinary Chinese people who had this. It's a kind of shared mentality of many Chinese. They they own uh, before before they witness someone who fight against the government and got a compensation, they would not um, participate at all. And then after that, they kind of really, they, they just stand there maybe regretting a lot that they did not do this. Um, and this is one of the, I think one of the um, what we call weakness among Chinese mentality that only want to focus on this film. He, his intention was, it's not just uh, showing ordinary Chinese people just as victim. The, they, they are flawed in, in their own behavior as well. Mm. Mm. So it doesn't sort of fall... The, or, the arbitrariness of it is not offensive to them. Offensive. I mean, they're, they're not shocked by the arbitrariness of the military moving in and doing a thing. They actually want to negotiate with it. The, you mean the people? The people. Yes. Mm. Um, some of them, um, yes, I, I don't believe, uh, some, sometimes they, they are very easy to, to uh, promise to move out. And, but when he saw 
uh, some people uh, protest uh, at the end, got more money, and they come to the castle for it. Come to the castle to see them, yeah. So, so, so lots of regrets and envy and jealousy and you know a complex mix of things going on here, which mean that it's not either anger or distress or passivity, I and mean, it's much mm. more messy mm. than that. So that is why I think Mr. Zhang is a very uh, good example for the citizen politics. So this is it's a good model. See, um, if everybody, the ordinary people in China, like him, I think the, the political situation will totally change. <laughs> Can we move on to, yeah, the back? I think we see some the police are actually Can you speak up a bit, please? The police coming in with their video cameras. Um, the police squabble over the official seal. And uh, then the authority is making a uh, young signing the uh, inventory list. My question is, are these sort of moves to make sure that everything is done properly? so concerned about their image, they make sure things are done properly. And also, with regard to the document, why do you not, why, why are these included? Are you, is this a sort of, it's very objective, I must say, you're not in opposition to a type of censorship. You probably see the Chinese government, the place of that, that in contrast to what they were announcing. So, first question is, is that indicative of the type of censorship that goes on, or rather, the way that the Chinese government authorities like to see themselves, they do think a lot of things about their international image, and also what, why do you leave these clips in, what do they really show about the process? I really lost you in the front. I think, you know, we're all struggling to kind of hear you very clearly, so... <laughs> I thought, I sort of hoped that Oling's hearing would be better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the back of, of the three things I mentioned, the, the seal, the sort of dispute over the, the squabble over the seal in the house, and the also seal. the police coming in, the authority of the video cameras, and also uh, the, the, the sort of requirement for him to sign the inventory list. Mm -hmm. Are these all signs that sort of the authorities are very concerned about their image, um, and hence their recording, and mm -hmm. making sure that everything's done properly? I mean, Sort of their type of processes you see with impulses and policy purchase in the UK is from, from a sort of legal point of view, it's not much different. So why and how the how the authorities what is that concern? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, they need the signature by Mr. Zhang just for the legal reason. Just uh, need a uh, bit of a little bit of a so it to, it's to show that you, you have agreed, and it's only when you've agreed that, that they can go in and de demolish the house. Yes, but it's, it's all in a process whereby they're sort of clearly concerned about how this demoli demolition looked on the international stage, given that there were film crews there that it was going to be shown. Uh, no, not at the no, 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 no. It's, it's, I th I, every demolition should uh, follow this process. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I, I think, um, uh, especially in Beijing, when you demolish a house, you, you need to follow this legal process. It, uh, legal process, yes, it got the, the agreement from the Westerners. Uh, it's not, not because of the international no, state. But not at that time, either. I mean, this was before, any, any, before the media, international media was making a fuss about demolition in Beijing. Yes, but in some small yeah. place, maybe the local government just have some mafia yeah. <coughs> to do it yeah. immediately. But this is Beijing, in the centre of Beijing, right in the centre of Beijing. I mean, the best, the best way, I mean, if I can just say something, is it's to, for the authorities covering their backs, 
Yes. And anecdotally, this other restaurateur who I know who's been collecting his own archive, he told me of another uh, protest in an adjacent street a bit after this one, um, and it concerned a nail house, an elderly woman in a nail house, uh, who was being coercively um, evicted before demolition. They, the police showed up, the army showed up, the fire brigade, mm -hmm. the lawyers, the ambulance, everything. In other words, so that if she tried to commit suicide, there'd be an, a hospital, an ambulance there to take her to hospital. The lawyers would be there to make sure that there'd be no wrongdoing. The fire brigade was there in case she tried to set, set fire to her house, rather than have it. So it's covering their backs. And you know, this, particularly in this film, I mean, this was way before the international, um, international media really had their sights uh, focused on Beijing. Nicola. <laughs> I I was just wondering why, um, when you got to know Mr. Zhang and so on, I mean, was his objection really about the kind of size of the compensation? Because I know that in China, I mean, it's really, that's the only, the only thing you can actually talk about. You can't really resist movement, but because at the end of the day, the developers are going to, they're going to win. Is, was it for him really about compensation or, or was it something kind of else about being moved and the community. I mean, I know you said it wasn't historical preservation, but, but was it about community? Because they're all being sent out to Fung I mean, it's way out of the center of Beijing and so on. I mean, what were, were his sort of ideas? Mr. Zhang just interested in the conversation mm -hmm. at the very beginning. Actually, he's not a cool guy. Mm -hmm. he had he, you know, you can see in the family, his uh, restaurant the business is very good. Um, <clears throat> he, he was not satisfied the the conversation. At the same time, also the like the uh, area, the, the area, yeah. Because um, uh, another another thing is the conversation standard is recording a legal file in 2001 and the demolition happened in 2006 that means the government uh, uh, give the conversation recording a very old very old uh, legal file uh, the government did not uh, get the market price involved in, in this in this case that is Mr. Zhang uh, the reason Mr. Down was not satisfied. But after he started protest, he found, uh, he, found, he found very interesting <laughs> to do this. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I think he, he is a good sample. When, 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 when you see some Chinese documentary, um, all the films of all the, the low income people, uh, for and if they protest, they will be very suffering from this process. But Mr. Zhang just kept it very peace and in a very creative way, a very funny way. And this is a um, this is a very I think it's a, a typical Beijing people. He's very humor and also very important. He he played Kung Fu for many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> he is a very important, uh, um, is in Beijing, a very important Beijing a very important He's actually an official um, heritator, someone who inherited inheritor of uh, a one of the most important Kung Fu branch. <laughs> in Beijing. And, and actually I, I saw in other in, in other footages that he was practicing doing his morning exercise practicing mm -hmm. Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. So I, I call this a happy, happy mm -hmm. protest. That is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, happy protest. Um and to Beijing but Beijing or to Jing or Ju Kubi
，所以他的他是那个持久性是很厉害的，他一直抗争了大概三四年，最后拿到那个那个他那个药的房产。嗯嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯
uh, to uh, computer for editing the video and uh, the, the recording device editing very pro professional <laughs> and then they set up a studio uh, or in the in, in the village then they make video every day and upload to Youku, the Chinese YouTube every day and and and, and using the Chinese Twitter micro blog to 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 uh, broadcasting the, the, the process of the protest every day, every moment, then a lot of people follow them and a lot of people uh, uh, um, forward them and then and then, uh, and then make a lot of people know this protest mm -hmm. and become very important event in China last year. Is it, if there was a, a competition or a race between bloggers who are writing, I thought I'd better bring it back to writing because it's the pen is a, a writing, writer's organisation. If it was a competition between the writers and the filmmakers to who could kind of, um, you know, force the, the social change and to make the biggest difference, who do you think will, will win? <laughs> or or are, you, are, you, are you biased? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's more directory. Yeah. Uh, I think even though some people could not recognize Chinese, but they, they will understand the, the moving image. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, the, and an example is the uh, Kaishitun. Yeah. Which was, what, what year was that? 2005? 2005 is another very important political event in China. Uh, it was documented by Professor Ai Xiaomi. Mm. That, that, that was also a very important documentary. And it was, it was a protest in Taisha village in, 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 in Guangdong. Yeah. And the first, I mean, I first became aware of it. It was a very sudden, explosive protest, you know, and a typical one of local farmers against the construction of something or other. And the, the local government sent its thugs in. And the image that Channel 4 News um, displayed just a couple of hours after it had happened, had been uh, transmitted via somebody's mobile phone. And, and I mean, of course, that image got out much more quickly than any written word could possibly have done, you know, through, through translation and all that. Yeah, today, everywhere in the world, global, everybody know to use Facebook or Twitter to organize uh, protests or other things. So, um, uh, social media is so, mm. so helpful. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, this is one of the some uh, uh, documentaries I saw the, you know, made in China. And this, uh, again, represents the big changes happened in China. If you compare with like the uh, 1989, you know, one the student shouting the uh, um, slogans of democracy or human rights or something on the street but that time the words are rather quite hollow without the, the real meaning you know this is a kind of a conception a notion mm -hmm. but with this kind of very concrete economy uh economical interest mm -hmm. you know people fighting that to die because the human rights or democracy now has a very concrete meaning directly into the life. So I think this is a very important moving forward. And this uh, movie for me had uh, two layers of uh, awareness. Uh, one layer is the, as you said, Mr. Zhang's awareness, how the arts, the camera actually has such power to help his fighting. Therefore he developed this uh, fighting into a kind of a form of uh, text, which is a documentary. The second layer is you to the artist, you know, especially doing this project uh, with the clear um, social, but also artistic idea, uh, conceptual art, but uh, put into the, um, like a performing arts, you know, like that, but through the social happening. And so I, I'm uh, hugely interested about this, if I compare with the cynical writers, but this is also writers, but in society, and in certain form, especially quite creative form. 
So I wanted to see that cultural layer. Uh, maybe you can add something about that. Yes, I believe in a in a, a digital age, camera or social media actually is a pen, P E N. <laughs> Mr. Zhang actually using the digital camera writing. Yeah, I, because the, the camera is very cheap, everybody can, can buy one. Mm. It's very cheap. So it's, today, I think it's one, two thousand RMB you can buy one. Mm. So everybody can get a pen to write his mm. story. So, um, so I, I, I often uh, quote a slogan, everybody can be an artist. Everybody can be a musician. Everybody can be a writer. So this is a uh, um, how to say it? Uh, the demo democracy democratization of the image uh, in this image in the image. Yeah. 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 This is a very um, but I, well, to compare the, the uh, <coughs> to compare the 1989 movement, I, I believe today uh, the ordinary people. Uh, make more sense because they protest for very detailed yeah. targets. Yeah. But in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 1989, the, the student pro protest for democracy is very abstract. Yeah, abstract. Yeah. And this is a great uh, process in the political situation yeah. in China today. One last one, Nikki, yeah, because we're six. Well, it's. Um yeah, I mean, this is obviously whetted our appetite. It was a very short bit of one film. And um, most of us won't get a chance to watch all of it. But I wondered if I could ask Jing Jing, are you actually going to put on some more documentary films in London? If so, could you tell us roughly when? when? <laughs> and when this one is going to be there? Right. Is this one? No, I'm so happy you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, um, we. Like the featured film we are going to show this year called Dragon Boat, which is a lot of films uh, have been made about demolishing and uh, all this government behavior, how they uh, change people's lives. But that film, to all, uh, among all these films are made, shows a quite different uh, focus, which is how the tradition, how the tradition of Dragon Boat racing, which is a very important part of holding uh, the, these villagers uh, together. When they moved, they, they were either happy or not unhappy, like Mr. Zhang. They got, they got some of their compensation, but what went lost was the tradition of uh, country Chinese uh, um, culture of, of uh, Dragon Ball racing. That is the film we're definitely going to feature this year. And also another one, which is, uh, with this film it, um, reminds me a lot about another one, it's called University Savages. When uh, <laughs> University City Savages, when those villagers, they didn't get to sign their names. They didn't even know about this. And someday, someone came to the door and just uh, moved all of them out. And they all going out, uh, shouting out slogan, long live Chama Mao, or something like that. It's quite a similar kind of sentiment of Mr. Zhang. They, all very, uh, they were all very reminiscent of the age of Chama Mao, a Chama Mao area when everybody was equal. So those two films were shown, and then I I I am not sure <laughs> if I am, I will have the time and the the, the, the slot that we can show uh, more of that. And this is which month, and how will people find out? Is it July? Oh, I, uh, if you all have a pen somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we can promote it on, on the free word website. And yes. I'm sure that and we can, because we, I think we should be now freedom to write, freedom to read, freedom to film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And, the, and the, it's we have in fact is that right? Huh? The website is China Connect. Uh, no, our website for the film festival. Well, um, we are discussing because I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sure I didn't see any of you at the BFI screening that we just finished uh, in, in, in February. So uh, we did a, uh, a first, our first cooperation with the British Film Institute this year in, uh, in around Chinese New Year and it went really, really successful because the tickets were sold out months before, before, the, before the screening. So we are cooperating again with them this year in July.
And um, yes, I, I am hoping, but I'm really, because this, first of all, this year is the year of the dragon, and then this year is the year of the Olympics. So we are showing a film about dragon ball racing, which is a traditional Chinese sport. <laughs> if I could just um, um, ask Owning a final question. I know we've run over a couple of minutes, but can you just tell us where you screened in China? To what kinds of audiences and with what kinds of responses? I screened the film uh, <coughs> mainly in university mm. and also in, in the gallery. Mm. In, for example, in the 7 a artist district and also many uh, bookshop, mm. cafe, but no cinema. <laughs> yeah. And you know, actually in China, we, we used to have a lot of independent film and video organization in different cities. All these organizations, they try to, they try to organize a lot of uh, films, independent film screening in, in the unnormal venue, like it's not in cinema, just in cafe, in bar, in, uh, in, <coughs> in the university. But uh, then all this, all this organization was banned uh, in uh, 2003 because this organization getting back, uh, bigger and bigger. In very bar, it will become a new fungo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then, then they ban it. Then, so today, if you need to see some very good Chinese documentary film, I think this is very important resources for for the search about the Chinese reality. So you can go to Beijing. The uh, this uh, uh, Li Xianting Film Foundation. They have a very good archive for the Chinese independent uh, documentary mm -hmm. film. If you are uh, doing for the your for the uh, study or uh, research uh, purpose, you can also order from from a New York based company, Degenerate. They distribute. Uh, they they doing the academic uh, distribution. For the Chinese independent film. Okay, well, I want to thank um, Oning and Xie uh, Jingjing very much. And I mean, we in my university, we in fact do have a series of documentary films and we have screened at Onings before, but I'd be more than happy to screen it again. So maybe I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll send you our list of events and then you can tell Penn um, members. And all of you are more than welcome. Anyway, thank you so much, Oning. That was a great. <laughs>
Thailand.